Jonathan here from Corsac Props. Today we're going to be showing you how I made this. This is a, you know, sort of an Aquaman inspired fish scale bracer, but this is almost entirely out of foam. And it's using one of our products, and I wanted to kind of show off how we make this, how easy it can be to work with the foam scales, and how you can get kind of a unique look that's a little bit different than the metal uh, scales you can get normally. And it gives you a little bit of a a freedom to paint it and and do some different effects on it that uh, you know can come out real nice on uh, this is the first one we built this was a test we did this on our twitch stream uh, as you can see there's a, quite a few uh, there's a couple gaps in it but uh, we're gonna fix that uh, going over it. when we paint the other one we'll paint we'll fix those it just needs another coat some of the black showing through after we actually bent it and it's something we're gonna fix on the other one but uh, this is a foam scale bracer, and it's got some leather. Uh, so it's, it's got a base of foam here. It's got some leather, and uh, that's just to sort of finish it out. And we've, you know, strapped it down, you know, used uh, just leather strapping there. But, uh, you know, obviously it uh, looks pretty cool. On um, You can add a couple different effects. You could add patterns in it by, you know, individually painting some of the scales. But this is... Uh, you know, one of the projects we're doing to kind of throw up on Etsy uh, occasionally. And uh, so in order to do this, what you're going to need, and we'll uh, kind of go through what we're going to be using. First off, you're definitely going to need some foam scales. Now, these are what are, we call our small uh, fish scale. Uh, and they come in sets of three on Etsy right now and we're hoping to get that down to where you can order just about as many as you need uh, once we get our website up and running but we're gonna need about four sheets of this for the, for this project so that's about eight total uh, for but you know to do to do two and uh, that's about this size this would be you know what I consider probably a large men's bracer it's uh you know not a small bracer by any means so like a female would probably you know get away with six or so on um, you know and it depends you know on which ones you buy as far as generally it covers about the same amount of area but if you check on our Etsy listings it shows you how much area each different size so if you do want to go to the larger sizes you know you can take care of that by uh, you, know, you can do some calculations on that so that's the first thing we're going to need. We're also going to have some other just generic foam. In fact, uh, it's right here. So we've got another piece of just blank foam. That's going to be the base that we glue everything to. And uh, obviously this is the piece we used to cut the other one out. And we'll go ahead and repeat that pattern. We also have a stitch of just gen you know leather we have um, that's just a scrap we've been using to make these pieces. And so that's really the material we're going to be using, and then we'll also have some strapping. So let's look at uh, various tools. And a lot of people are going to have, you know, similar sort of tools and stuff to what we're using. And uh, now these are containers we have for these various things. So as you can see, this is it's getting caught by the light, but we have contact cement and we have future floor wax. The uh, future floor wax is what we're using as our sealer, and the contact cement is how we're gluing everything together. And we use um, dab, but you can use your special variant of, you know, barge or whatever you use uh, that's that you're used to working with. This is just what we've been using so far, and uh, the future floor wax is what we have here um it's actually called uh pledge floor care finish um this is a an acrylic based floor wax and uh, we'll have a link to that in the description and you know i checked that out on amazon it's it's pretty cheap for this big bottle and it airbrushes really nice but you can apply this with just a foam brush and uh so we won't be doing that today because it's a little bit harder and it's a little bit more difficult um time consuming not really difficult and uh, we're also going to be using <clears throat> foam brushes so we'll have to have some of those laying around and that's really just to apply the either apply the feature floor wax if you're not going to use an airbrush and to apply the contact cement we're also be using our airbrush and uh, this is a single action this posit Pache H8 uh, it needs a good cleaning but uh, 
the inners just got cleaned it just the outside needs a little <laughs> little work uh we're also gonna be using our brand new kiwi uh this is an uh, the Kiwi Ergo knife we just got, but it's just an X-Acto knife. You know, any X-Acto knife works, but I've been really enjoying working with this one. I uh, just got that off of Kickstarter, actually, and we'll have a video review of that coming up. So we're going to start by putting, uh, you know, by cutting out uh, the base of the the bracer now this is just two millimeter craft foam and we're just cutting it uh into the shape we used the last time we actually had a pattern for the previous one that we used but this one uh, we just sort of free float it and uh, we used the same measurements we used on the last one and uh so now we're going to be moving on to the contact cement and contact cement's really cool if you've never used it uh basically we're going to paint it on and we've got to let that dry and that's going to cure and then once the once the two cements are, are dry when they touch each other it creates a permanent bond it's actually stronger than the foam in most cases so we're putting it on the base um this is going to give us the ability to you know let that dry for a little bit let it you know cure up so that when we get everything cut out and everything uh ready on the other side so now we're going to start cutting out the foam scales and as you can see there there are two little tiny tabs in the foam scales that uh, you know just need to be sliced out and then the whole strip will come out <clears throat> and this is great for, for rapidly laying down large sections all at one time uh, you can cut them you know into smaller strips it just depends on the look you're going for the uh, you know frame and stuff can just be thrown away or if you find a purpose for it that <laughs> that's great now we're gonna go ahead and put uh, contact cement on these and we're gonna do basically all of the the pieces uh, and let them cure basically by sheet and it, it, it's kind of a neat size that allows you to just do one sheet at a time and we're covering about 75% you can do the whole thing in fact we've done if you watch our other video you can spray uh, but you know foam to foam it's not as strong a connection any of the sprays we've tried super 90 and all that but uh, so leaving the the last tip there not cure just kind of gives me a place to hang on to uh, without you know glue on it but it uh, it's not really necessary to either paint it to coat that or not coat it because it's not gonna really touch anything with foam now if you do want to get a specific look where you know all of the foam lays down really nice and tight and doesn't move or shift in at all you can kind of get in there and, and do the op you know after you lay a row down put a little strip of, of glue on there let that dry and then put the next layer on and have them actually adhere to each other but this method allows you to kind of get them to connect you know in each row so when the when it moves and flexes it it actually moves and pulls away from each other and we're just going to continue to you know add the glue and, and and start laying these down here in a minute So now we're going to start the the process of laying these down so we're, we're checking here to see which ones are, are pretty dry and ready to go now when you when you attach these this first row uh you look at the the valley right there at the edge you know if you put that right on that edge you don't get to see any of the under material and it looks like the scales are just ending naturally and uh as we attach you know the row it's obviously going to not fit perfect so we take those off uh, you know just by slicing that little connection and those are really handy for the next you know row or so we uh, usually when we're doing this you want to kind of offset them a little bit uh, you offset obviously each row but you want to offset the sets because if you lay them all down in uh, you know just keep laying them down starting at the same starting point it creates a sort of a crack in the material because there'll be an area where they're just not connected where they're all everything else is connected but right down the center there's this like weaving line of not of not being connected so to, to prevent that from just like buckling funny when you when you rotate everything you know we add the little pieces in um, 
they get cut off and, and that sort of just adjusts everything so that you know you're you're keeping that line away from each other so normally it doesn't matter you know that there is this one point that isn't you know completely connected it's just when you string them all together they can kind of cause a problem and normally you won't even see it and uh, so we're just going to continue to lay the foam down you know we're trying to get one whole sheet at a time as I said and uh, so you know taking the little pieces off and using them later but yeah it's uh, it goes down really fast um, and super clean and and Now, obviously, we're starting the next layer here. This layer is, you know, about the same width as the last time. You know, we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to move on to doing the scales. You know, this can be the the tedious part of the process uh, it's not nearly as tedious as doing actual metal which is ring after ring after ring and you know breaking the jump rings and connecting the pieces together and, and moving scale by scale but you know with anything if you're, you're doing this kind of repetitive task you know it's good to just kind of Zen out and uh, you know watch TV or or do something unfortunately you know with contact cement you kind of have to have some you know decent space and a you know respirator or uh, at least a really good fan to kind of keep them fumes away from you so but uh but yeah it, it's uh, just a very simple process very easily repetitive and you can kind of just zone out and go to your own little little place with it <laughs>
Let's see, this is about the what the third sheet here we've done, and uh, they they go pretty far. Um, you know, unless you're doing like a shirt or something that you know just depends on the surface area that you're using, and uh, <clears throat> they're uh, really easy to to remove and to to kind of experiment with. You know, you can once we get to the painting stages, you know, you'll see that you know how easy it is to to paint them up, and make them look. Uh, really good and uh, you can obviously use other painting methods um, than what we use but that's what we found was the best and the easiest way to get you know especially metallic looks and stuff <clears throat> so we're just kind of still jamming along here you know adding the uh, contact cement here and, and getting everything you know stuck in place Obviously, you can do this in smaller batches too, uh, you know, because we're doing this for the video and we're doing it under sort of a time condition. You know, maybe doing half a sheet at a time would be better. It depends on your workspace. You know, we're also restricted to the camera, you know, and not wanting to do too much outside of frame. But uh, yeah, you got to watch they don't stick to each other while you're <laughs> coating everything. But uh, yeah, so we're just going to get back to, to laying down here the uh, different strips. And again, we're <clears throat> staggering everything just a little bit. And that just, like I said, prevents that uh, cracking look that's, that was on our you know, first couple that we'd done. starting our fourth and final sheet here this is going to be um i think we use most of this uh maybe not all of it but it gives you a good good idea of of how how much area is covered by you know one of these operations in fact uh, didn't even look like we cut that whole sheet so yeah we we're just uh i'm gonna do these couple pieces right here but the uh the uh if, if you're doing a you know a, a pauldron or a shirt you know it obviously changes a little bit and it's kind of hard to sometimes guesstimate how many but this gives you a good idea like i, I would guess a pauldron is going to be two to three sheets you know depending on size and a shirt can range anywhere from oh it depends like the front of a shirt is about eight to ten you know a full shirt is going to be somewhere between 20 and 30 sheets it really depends on the size the fit uh, you know, you've got a bunch of different variables there. Uh, so we do have, you know, if you want to estimate all the way down and, and figure, figure it out, each sheet has an approximate area of coverage. Now, you know, if you're really super careful about how you lay them down, they'll cover that much because we did it, you know, inside software. But the, um, <coughs> that was a... I did a little estimation with my finger there to kind of determine how many sheets were, were needed. So, 
that we can finish that out so now we know exactly how many sheet how many uh, rows to cut and now they go sticking to each other again which is problematic I use foam to lay down these, uh, to, to lay this stuff down, and you, you probably can see it in the video, that, that brush, in fact, yeah, I went ahead and cut it right there, that brush, it, it eats those foam brushes, uh, contact cement will, so it'll eventually uh, deteriorate on you, which is why you either just go through a couple because they're, they're really cheap or, you know, there's a bunch of other methods, you know, I've seen squeeze bottles, and uh, I've been meaning to get one myself. Uh, this stuff's obviously too thick to go through a squeeze bottle, but uh, you can use a squeeze bottle to kind of lay it down and then use, you know, if you use EVA foam, it obviously doesn't need EVA foam. So you'll also see people use EVA as a, uh, you know, a spreader. So they'll take a piece of scrap EVA and just lay it down with the squeeze bottle and then spread it around. So that may be a little faster. It's obviously it's a it's definitely a little faster if you're not dealing with the thick stuff we were which is really stringy we've since switched to barge and it dries a lot faster so we am definitely enjoying the barge now it looks like we're coming to an end here so the uh, Get everything all set up and, and the overhang you'll see some of them overhang they may not be attached to the foam really good but we'll attach those to the leather on the other end so now we're going to cut the strip off there in the back now that's just it, you you can't really estimate exactly how far back it's going to go you know without mapping things out a little bit better and we were just kind of jazzing on making this little bracer we did the same thing on the other one. Uh, you can sort of estimate it and get close, but uh, you know each layer doesn't go down perfect, especially when we're doing stuff for test everything. So now we're going to start the painting process. So this is going to involve uh, future floor wax, which we covered in the beginning is you know just an acrylic floor wax, and we're going to shoot that through the airbrush. So you may. Uh, you can lay it down with a foam brush or even a chip brush. You will get a little bit of bubbling. It's sort of problematic. I don't, um, it's not insurmountable, but if you let the bubbles dry without popping them, and usually I just, when I'm laying it down with a, with a foam brush, I, I dab it on and then I use the flat of the brush to kind of pop all the bubbles and it, it comes out pretty good. But it, it, this stuff blows through an airbrush like crazy. So, that's what we'll do here is is just airbrush it and you'll see we're going to continue to to layer it several times and we're just doing thin coats so they dry almost instantly and we're going to hit it from several angles and this is our this is our sealant coat this is what's given us a good base for when we put the acrylic on and that'll prevent the acrylic from cracking and stuff uh, you know because we're using the airbrush we're not putting a lot of material on there it, you don't have to worry about it cracking or breaking off and the floor wax being acrylic sticks to acrylic paint and it sticks to and it's flexible when it dries it's actually very flexible so as you can see we're just changing the orientation and trying to hit it from every angle get all them nice grooves get uh, you know into the all the nooks and crannies and get everything all good cover good base cover that's basically our primer code. And I'm flexing this here, and that's going to be, we're going to try and get in there and kind of break everything up. It's going to break when we actually bend it. And then we're going to hit it with the airbrush to get in there and seal those areas that are exposed now because not every sheet, every layer is attached to itself. 
we you know we're gonna have that flex and we want that flex but we also don't want it to expose the uh, you know the black like it was doing on the the previous piece which we'll fix here in a minute so I think we're gonna let that dry here real quick and then we'll come back at it with the um, metallic okay so now we're gonna start using the createx paint here to give our um, golden you know paint layer now what we're using is createx pearlized satin gold and they they have a bunch of metallics and you can really use any acrylic uh, your you know airbrush acrylic if you want to use some of the more if you want to find a really good metallic you look into some of the model model paints usually have really good ones uh, Vallejo um, even Games Workshop, Pride to Your Press, they, they all make really good metallics. Some are better at airbrushing, some are not, you know, some have better pigment. So, you know, explore, find find what works with you, you know, for you as far as the colors you need and stuff. But we're again we're just gonna be airbrushing here and laying down several layers of paint here to get up to that golden hue we want and changing the Change the angle a lot like we did with the previous coat to just get and make sure that we get, you know, every nook and cranny into all them valleys and stuff, so. color check here we want to make sure both of these match and look like they go together so we're checking uh, and this uh, the previous one we hit a lot heavier a lot heavier with the the paint you know so required less layers but more dry time but for the video we were trying to uh, you know go lighter and, and work our way up you know with just light airbrush coat coats which is the best way to do it you know because then you get right to that tone that you want. You know, and we're bending this again you know to find those nooks and crannies that are they're gonna get exposed and we want to make sure we cover those so we're gonna get in there and bend them bend the piece to where it's gonna be and this is where we started fixing the other one and Here's a quick fix and just get in there with the airbrush and hit all of them black areas that exposed. You know, flexing it in a you know different direction. <clears throat> also helps you know to, to kind of get you're just trying to break up that material and make sure you see where they're gonna flex you know the most and get get rid of that okay so now we're gonna start our final coat this is gonna be the sealant coat this is a uh, just a coating of the future floor wax again what that does is it seals all of your your paint in gives it a nice flexible layer on top you know it is slightly glossy so if you need to uh, get a matte finish you're gonna have to go over with uh, some sort of uh, you know matte clear coat or, or something in in order to get the right combo if it needs to flex you're gonna have to experiment with it and you know make sure you test some pieces before you do that but because it's metallic having it a little extra sheen uh, doesn't do much uh, to hurt anything so 
and there we have it that's uh everything's good to go and now we're gonna go ahead and start adding the uh the leather here in a minute okay so we're gonna start the uh leather portion of the build and uh, we've got some some string here some just leather cord we're gonna cut that and attach that to e to each other with the contact cement and the reason for that is to make sure that you know we didn't the the scrap bundle we bought didn't have anything long enough for what we needed so because it was cheap we can just take these and connect them together and so we use the contact cement for that now we're going to size the piece of leather and we're going to try and get make sure everything is uh you know make, make sure the pieces look right and they're at the right angle and then we're going to cut those out and get uh them attached and we'll be using contact cement and contact cement's great for attaching leather to foam and I like adding you know a layer of leather sometimes if you need to give some strength to a uh, to a piece of uh, you know foam or whatever and uh, that helps out a lot but for this look you know we're there's no reason to try and make faux leather we're just using a little scrap of leather to make it look like the foam the the bracer is completely leather underneath. Uh, you could obviously use leather for everything, but it's kind of pricey and foam steel. So. This was a bit tricky because we had the finished side up of the leather, so we had to make sure we could. bits now we're gonna start with the punch now I don't like this punch tool and I've recently bought some other stuff to get a better better look because it, it just doesn't punch through the leather especially the stick stuff now what we're doing with the ruler here is marking everything off I think I'm gonna use the marker here I probably should have used a pencil but I was just putting a dot down and I was gonna cut the dot out anyway so we're just making sure the holes are all evenly spaced and that there's the right number of them because each side has to have the same number for when we thread them. And as you can see, you know, even though we're punching and twisting and stuff, it's not actually kicking out the little piece of foam or a little leather. It punches holes in foam real nice, though. Just why I'll probably keep it around. Attaching the two ends, they've had enough time to dry, so we're going to attach them together. So we're using the exact the exacto blade here to kind of pull them out. Um, you know, hitting it from the other side was okay, but I was still getting. You know, this was hard because it, you know, it won't work on foam because it will leave a mark, but. Even then, we were still having to go in and clean out 
all these little pieces, but we're just trying to make these holes. from both sides to just get that to kick out little little pieces for some reason it cuts through most of it and then like one side doesn't so I don't know if I mean it's just a cheap tool well, I got it a hard uh, Hobby Lobby all right now I'm gonna start the threading process here there's probably a like official <clears throat> medieval style process for this I just kind of shoelaced it a little just something to bind it up and, and make sure it stays on so then we cross it and, and roll under over and under mm -hmm. 